Welcome, everyone. This is now group four. Uh, yes, group four and session one. There will be five sessions this week. We will convene every afternoon at two o'clock on the Zoom, uh, really for support. So you can ask questions and I can emphasize anything that I think is important in terms of the training. Um, and we're going to record them. So if for some reason you can't get in, um, or there's a network problem, then later in the afternoon, I'll post you a link and you can go and have a look at the Zoom recording. The Zoom recordings, though, well, the, re the Zoom and the Zoom recordings will really only be for support and for you to ask questions and for me um, uh, uh, to kind of uh, go through some of the work we've already done. Most of the training, most of the learning happens asynchronously. And by that, we mean on one of the four tutorials that you will be studying over the next few days. All right, so I'm going to um, uh, give you a link to, let me uh, escape out of here. I'm going to give you a link to one of four recordings every afternoon, uh, no, sorry, tutorials uh, every afternoon. The first tutorial, let's zoom in so you can see. Is the latest, coolest stuff. Oh, okay. Um, so here's the first one. Uh, tonight, or this afternoon, tonight and tomorrow morning, you need to work through tutorial number one, using OER for teaching and learning. All right. So um, the way it's structured then is that you will uh, do this in your own time. Uh, you'll need data. So um, you'll need the links will be in the WhatsApp, um, but then you need to do it on your phone or on your laptop or uh, your device and then um, be ready for the Zoom meeting the following day. Uh, let, word of warning for tutorial number one, there is a test in the very second session. So as soon as we get back, uh, as soon as I meet you next uh, tomorrow, then I'm going to give you a test. So be ready to do a test. Um, it's all done on the WhatsApp, so that will be cool. And the second tutorial, which you'll do Tuesday evening, is how do you find these OERs? As the introductory video said, they're not all in one place. So how do you find them? So we'll show you a couple of search techniques so you can actually go and identify uh, where these OERs are. Uh, then in tutorial number three, so Wednesday evening, you'll be looking at uh, how to create your own. So we'll investigate how do you adapt existing ones to better suit the Zimbabwe context. And then we'll also be looking at how do you start from scratch? Or maybe you already have a a teaching resource which you'd like to share with the world. Um, so therefore, um, how do you license this and get it ready for um, for use as an OER? I'm just going to close my WhatsApp. It's going bananas. Okay, tutorial number four, share your OER with others. So on Thursday night, we're going to encourage you to uh, uh, investigate different ways that you can then share the just going to mute a few people. Um, how do you share your resources with people around the world? Um, so what mechanism can you uh, use to reach out to these people elsewhere? So they're, um, even though you might be working in Masvingo or somewhere, then um, obviously you can still share your resources with the world. Um, and there's an evaluation form for Friday. All right. So um, here on this particular grid, is all the recordings that we've had so far you are group four and you can see we've had a number of sessions previously i've <laughs> i've done this a few times now uh so uh, you can see group four uh we've already started our recording for number one this evening you can click on there and go through if you want so this page we've got here i'm going to put this link in both the chat and in the um, the WhatsApp. Uh, that link there is where all your resources are. So if you need to find anything, then you should come to this link. I'm going to put it in now. Um, uh, save it somewhere, group four. Save it somewhere where you can find it in the future. There it goes. Well, I've just added it to the, the WhatsApp and let me also add it to the Zoom. There's the Zoom here chat oh, there we go right done all right so now you have a link to all the resources you could possibly need in order for the training over the next few days all right so 
Um, again, when you come onto the site here, you can see there's Ministry of Primary Secondary Education, uh, UNESCO Harare, and OER Africa uh, are involved, uh, and so on. So there's that little propaganda movie you've just seen. Here will be the links to your Zoom recording, so you can always go back and check. Um, and here is the link to the training agenda. So I'm going to call it up quickly so you can see uh, what we anticipated. This is blah, 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 blah. What are we going to do? Uh, and I've already briefly gone over that. So there are four tutorials. Um, and you can see what we uh, what our outcomes are. We're trying to be very good and model good practice. So all our outcomes are clearly stated. And then very importantly, there is an exit um, assignment. So if, for, if you want to get the certificate for module 2B, then you need to uh, perform. All right. So there's no lectures. You've got to have to go and do these tutorials one a night for the next four nights, and then you're going to have to craft your own OER. All right, I'll talk about OERs in a minute, but I'm just giving you a basic overview. All right, so uh, here is our criteria that we're going to use to mark you. All right, and you can have a look at that first before you get stuck in. I'll come back to this later in the week at the moment. Just be aware that there is an assignment. All right. Um, so then I thought, well, uh, you know a little bit about me now. You know, for example, I work in Johannesburg. We're a little consultancy, Neil Butcher and Associates. We've done lots of work for UNESCO in the past, and now they've asked us to come in and do this little section on OERs. All right. However, um, as I mentioned in the video, I'm very excited because I've met some of you before. Um, I was in Zimbabwe in 2019, very fortunate. Uh, did some work in some training in um, uh, Masvingo, Mutari, Harare, and Bulawayo. So, uh, and then there was another opportunity. I even ended up in Gweru. So, have been around them a little bit. So, I kind of know the geography and the layout. So, in my question to you, when I asked you to fill this form, and I see now we've got up to 35 responses, which is cool. All right. I asked you um, where. Which urban center is closest to where you work? All right. And what's interesting about this group is there's a nice, strong contingent from Bulawayo. We've got 37% of you guys at the moment um, go into Bulawayo occasionally and uh, uh, do all your stuff there. All right. Very strong contingent from Harare. Uh, that's been true of all four groups. So it looks like Harare is the center of Zim and lots of teachers involved. So that's cool. Um, but we do have a 9% um, from Masvingo. Cool. Uh, we had a lovely workshop there. So I don't know if I did get an opportunity to meet you. Um, uh, it, um, just outside the the, the ruins, the, the Great Zimbabwe. That was amazing. It was really, really cool. Plus, I got to meet all you guys, and uh, we built a whole load of curriculum resources and stuff. So you're going to see a couple of them from time to time and uh, in this session, because I'm going to use some of their ideas to try and stimulate uh, your creativity. All right. So that's nice. Then I'm beginning to understand where you come from. We've got a few people from Kariba, but three people from Kariba, have, um, they've been a little bit underrepresented in the last few in the last few workshops. So that's cool. I'm, I'm chuffed to see that as well. Then I asked you, where do you teach? I mean, are you a primary school teacher, a secondary school teacher? And we can see here the vast majority of you uh, are primary and secondary. In fact, well, good representation of both. But we do have a few ECD people and we do have a few higher education. Well, you've got one person. So that's cool. All right. But that does mean that I'm going to give a lot of examples which suits primary and secondary. All right. When I do my chatting. Then I wanted to kind of know how hard can I push you? Are you guys so scared of technology um, that if I say turn on the machine, you're going to ask me where's the button? Or are you way past that? Or are you, you know, are you kind of comfortable using ICT. Again, I, it, I needed to know this so that I can make sure that I provide the right amount of support and also that I can ask you to do things which are beyond just basic ICT skills. So cool. When I have a look here, I can see that 20 of you, some 57% are very comfortable. All right. We've got 11, 31% uh, 
who are okay. But we do have a few people who are feeling a little bit vulnerable, a little, not vulnerable, a little bit tentative um, about their ICT skills. So I need to keep that in mind then that there is that level of support. That isn't using your word processor. One of the big things about um, uh, COVID-19 and the, the need to now teach remotely is that a lot of educators are finding they're experimenting with different types of technologies in order to, I'm going to turn that off, it's annoying me, um, are now finding that they're experimenting with different types of technologies in order to reach out to their students during lockdown and various other times when uh, access to school is limited. So um, I asked how many of you are used to this type of platform, Zoom? Um, I, what I've found out is in the last year, I've spent my life on this platform. I don't think I'm a particularly great facilitator, but I think I'm getting better. So, um, so we're trying to model good practice. And you're going to see I'm going to keep these sessions short because I don't like lectures on Zoom. I think people just turn their cam and their mic off and then they go to sleep or even wander off. Who knows if they're even there. So um, I'm going to use this mechanism for you guys to talk to me and me to talk to you. I'm just setting the scene at the moment. It's interesting, none of you felt yet um, that you are experts in the field. Um, we've got 58% saying, yeah, you're okay, you're all right with Zoom. But then we've got quite a lot of people who are saying this is kind of new. All right. So anyway, let's hopefully that you'll learn something from using the Zoom. Uh, in the other three groups, we have experienced connectivity problems for some people. Group three was terrible. But groups one and two kind of made a plan. But group three, I don't know why. They really, really struggled. Well, not everyone, but a segment. So um, UNESCO has sent out data for you. Please keep your data for the Zoom. Don't use it up on Facebook and other rubbish. All right, make sure that you use the data for what it's for. And uh, Lovemore sent out some recommendations about turning various things off so you don't waste your data with um, uh, updates and various other things which you don't necessarily require for the training. So that was interesting. Then I asked you about searching the internet. Yeah, you guys aren't scared of this. Look at that. All right. If you're up on the right hand side, that means this is uh, technology and skills that you are comfortable with. So cool. That's nice. Then we said, how about using phone apps? We're finding that uh, my era, when I was younger, that was a long time ago, uh, we were all into um, Windows and laptops and PCs. And so we kind of grew up with that type of um, background, but it's definitely changed. So in the last 10 years, big swing towards using apps now and mobiles and I um, we're going to see in a minute how many of you are using mobiles, but I bet you, if, based on what the other groups told us, is that a lot of you are using mobiles. So are you beginning to use your phones for teaching? All right. So we wanted to know, are you teaching using uh, phone apps? And uh, only three of you said, yeah, this is something that you're experimenting with regularly. But 47% of you said, yeah, yeah, I know this is happening. So that's cool. That's nice to see. Uh, rate your access to digital devices. Uh, good. So even though we've chosen a technology route for module 2B, we're going to be using WhatsApp, we're using Zoom, and you're going to see I'm going to use a whole lot of apps. Um, you've already seen Forms, but we're also going to be using Kahoot and um, various other apps. Uh, so it looks like you guys generally aren't scared of that that you can rise to the occasion. Got to be a little bit worried about these guys, just make sure that they stay with the program. All right, rate your access to internet connectivity. It's a little bit low considering you all got data. I hope you did, all right. Um, we, had to, we had to pause group three because their data hadn't arrived. So based on what you said in the app, uh, in the WhatsApp, we, we expect you guys to have good connectivity. You got some data, all right, don't waste it. Uh, rate your access to teaching resources. Um, and it's interesting here, um, a lot of you saying, okay, in the middle. A lot of you saying, uh, we're, we're struggling a little bit. Uh, oh no, this up this end here means you've got plenty. This down here means you haven't got much. All right, so we can see that group four is feeling that, yeah, they could benefit from access to lots of new teaching and learning resources. All right, so that's good. That's why we're here. So we're going to demonstrate to you how to find them and also how to share your own ones with others to improve their access as well. So cool. 
All right. So in terms of technology, you guys seem okay. I'm not too worried. Would you rather? So then I wanted to know what is your attitude towards technology? And um, it's interesting. Uh, unlike the other groups, all three of the other groups were up the right-hand side saying that they love technology. This is the first group where we're saying mm, we're a bit ambivalent about it. Hence the very strong central um, um, distribution. And then we said, uh, would you prefer uh, that technology went away and you can get back to teaching and learning like you used to? Again, it's more in the middle saying, yeah, uh, there's a couple of guys here who's saying technology is okay. Most of you are saying, mm, yeah, medium, medium, all right? And um, then we asked you, do you like technology that is tried and tested or the latest bells and whistles? Okay, and that's interesting. You're a little bit more towards the right. Yeah, again, in the middle, but a little bit more to the right. Towards the right means that they love the technology because it's cool. All right. Then we asked, then I asked you, why do you get up in the morning? Okay, what motivates you? And uh, um, they, these are anonymous, but you can see it says. I want learners to be equipped with skills to deal with the challenges of life. Cool. That's nice. Uh, the love of children. Ah, look at that. Uh, many people say that teaching is a calling. All right. Um, you love the kids. You love opening their minds, helping them to read and write and all the other skills that come with education. To equip learners with ICT life skills. Okay. That's cool. That's interesting. The passion to change lives and make a positive impact in the community. Nice. I have children at heart, and it's my passion. I can get up in the morning to teach the little ones. The ability to make a difference, change or correct behavior in human beings. I am an urgent, I think it's agent, an agent of change. All right. So if we start looking through these, I'll just skip down to the bottom. We didn't need to go through them all. To me, teaching is a calling. I wish to impart and produce students who are socially friendly and have the adequate skills to live harmoniously with their um, environment and their position in there. Have interest in the learner, interacting with learners. I love the job to teach. All right, so what we're seeing then is that this group particularly is very strong on um, the the education component, the the ability to um, support and nurture the new generation coming through, um, to provide them with the skills necessary to be effective um, citizens and uh, strong members of the community, contributing positively, etc. So nice, I like that. I'm hoping that what you the message I send about sharing your resources about um, improving your teaching and therefore improving learning will be will resonate strongly with you. you this group i must say from a humanist perspective is the strongest of the three we've had so far the uh, previous groups especially group two were very technocentric whereas this group tends to by the what, what, I, what i'm reading here very humanist okay so cool all right very nice Okay, so now I know a little bit about you guys. So thank you very much for filling in the questionnaire. That helped me very quickly get to speed with you. I don't have, we have 29, 30 people in the Zoom meeting. So I'm going to open up for um, a few comments um, in a moment, but we won't have a chance to go through everyone. But there will be opportunities to um, speak out in the five sessions that we have organized. Please feel free to uh, indicate to me that you would like to speak. The best way to describe what are OERs is to understand that they are part of something quite a lot bigger. So if we talk of open education, then we're talking about an education system which does not discriminate uh, in any way and allows all students, no matter what their background, um, access to quality education. If you think of the model that you've got at the moment, all right, where did that model come from? 
it came from colonial times, all right? So it came from the British Empire in your case, all right? And you've basically just, well, everyone is. They've copied. So South Africa as well, all these countries who were previously uh, part of the empire have basically copied the system and replicated it. But there are problems with the system, all right? So number one, the system was originally designed to provide bureaucrats and um, soldiers and workers and um, people to work within the system of empire. So originally it, it benefited the ruling elite, all right? So the ruling elite were the ones who put their kids through the school system. And then the um, only recently in the last couple of decades have we moved towards universal access to education. All right. So um, our system isn't really designed to support everyone. Okay. If you think about our education system, it's extremely labor intensive. Um, it is very expensive. If you look at your national budget, for example, okay, what is most of the money? What, are the, what does all the tax go on? Um, normally, education is at least the second or the third biggest item on the on the budget. All right, and um, so therefore, it's an expensive, labor-intensive system, and therefore, by its very nature, it is exclusionary. So it kind of knocks people out of the system. Uh, quite often you hear that remote schooling um, just doesn't have access to the same extent as urban areas in terms of resources and expertise and capacity, et cetera, all right? So again, it shows you even within a country, um, according to where you are in the country, is to your access to quality education. Now, what happens if, for example, um, you're not rich, all right, then does that mean you have to get um, substandard or, uh, or inferior education? And that's what open education is trying to say. say. No, in this day and age, with the technology that's available and with the resources, etc., we should be able to provide flexible um, access to quality education for everyone. Okay, but having said that, that's not always so easy. Um, so OERs then are building blocks towards achieving this higher noble idea that free and accessible access to quality education. Um, but the interesting thing is, uh, uh, oh, so OERs then, if you look at the definition, are teaching, learning, and research materials in any medium, digital or otherwise, that reside in the public domain or have been under an <laughs> that have been released under an open license that permits no cost access, use, adaptation, and redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions. So it's very fancy terminology, but it basically means that there should be a pool of teaching and learning resources which are offered to everyone, teachers and students, at no cost. You don't have to ask for permission to use them. They are of high quality. Um, you can make as many copies as you like. And in some instances, you are even allowed to adapt them to better suit your teaching. <laughs> Sorry, um, muting that person didn't seem to work. So anyway, all right. So um, the so these are resources then that are available to to teachers like yourself, uh, free of charge, and that you can organize reorganize so that they work better for your context. But it does offer that then beg the question: Where do they come from? So it is educators themselves who are creating these and then sharing them around the world. And we're going to demonstrate where they are and how to find them and how to adapt them, etc. But we really want you guys to also offer some of your teaching and learning resources to the world as well. So if you're going to be a, a user, you should also be a contributor as well. So you should uh, use others, but then also uh, offer yours. So that's kind of what we're trying to model over the next few days 
is um, how do you um, uh, find these OERs? How do you adapt them? And how do you put them back so that other people can benefit from your, your contributions? And that's basically what we're going to be doing. It's as simple uh, as that. Um, all right, let me just have a look. Is there anything else? Right, we've got some videos. I don't want to play them now. I want you to have a look at them tonight. Uh, we've been going 35 minutes. I'm going to open up for questions and queries in a minute. Um, but what you're seeing on the screen is actually the tonight's tutorial that I want you to work through. So I want you to have a look at what are they? What is open licensing? Um, there's a little quiz to check to see if you know what's going on. Uh, and then that's it. So it should take you about 50 minutes, maybe not even that, 40 to 50 minutes. And then I would like you to be ready for a little test tomorrow. I'm going to test to see if you've been through them and understood. So before I open it up for discussion, um, one word of, you really, really need to be aware that the learning is in the tutorials. If you don't do the tutorials, then you won't be able to do the assignment and you won't be able to go through uh, module 2b uh, as complete. So um, keep that in mind then. You, listening to me is not going to help. You've got to do the tutorials and you've got to do them in your own time, at your own pace, uh, and work through them. They're fun. They've got videos and animations and drag and drop and little activities, et cetera, et cetera. But, and they're designed for the phone. So they should work nicely on the phone. It's not like you need big real estate, but you do have to do those four tutorials. All right, enough yada yada from me. I'm now going to ask you to put your hands up. And um, if you could, um, uh, yeah, ask any questions about the training uh, or the approach, anything like that. Uh, Mubonderi, uh, would you like to, yep. Get a question? Yeah, it's, it's not really a question, but it's a contribution rather mm -hmm. that you have um, you have actually highlighted uh, all the aspects that we really need to know. But uh, probably on the quiz, um, is it out of what? Out of hundred? Maybe you can just uh, enlighten us more on the quiz. <laughs> okay, uh, it there are ten questions, and um, it's out of 10, I suppose. Um, to be honest, that's not what I'm interested in. I want to see generally whether you've been through the material. So I'll be able to tell from your, from your result whether you actually went through the tutorial in the night before. To me, for handing out the certificate, so let me show you what the certificate will look like, a little demonstration. All right, so, um, and you see how it's worded. In the end, I'm of the, uh, the belief that uh, just learning stuff for um, theory is, is neither here nor there. I'm interested in whether you can do the doing. All right. So I want to see you actually create and share an OER. All right. So to me, that's what I'm going to give the certificate for. So if you look at the wording, it says so-and-so has completed the module at this date and submitted openly licensed curriculum materials to the MOPSI EduConnect repository. So that is what I'm going to be giving the certificate for, okay, and recognition. If people say, were you on this course? I see Lovemore was making you do your attendance register in the WhatsApp. That's important for him because he needs to be able to justify uh, the training. He's, uh, MOPSI wants to know how many people are on the training. To me, it's immaterial. I want to know how many people have uploaded resources and shared it with the world? That to me is the prize. So uh, 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 Mubonderi, make sure that you submit your resources later in the week. That's the real test. All right, I see 269985 has got her hand up. No, I was just showing my hand that um, I, at least at last I managed to join me. Hey, good. Well done. Okay, good. Um, and I do like it when you put your mics, uh, your videos on, because then I can see you. And it's really, really interesting. So like Silent, for example, I think he's at school, because I can see this, the ceiling. 
Well, I can see the roof. Um, Darlington looks very, very serious. He's been keeping an eye on the whole time. There's nothing I can do without him seeing what I'm up to. And uh, I can see Lister. She's got some pictures on the wall. It looks like some very, very official looking character. Oh, yes. Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. So I can't see who the figure is, but I assume it's a government official. You must be at work too. There we go. Let's just try to give us a demo of where she is. Cool. That's lekker. All right. Uh, Itai, I can only just see the corners of your ceiling, but you, you're peering down at me. I feel very intimidated. Any other questions or queries? We've been going for 42 minutes. I don't want to go too long. I want to save your data only for important stuff. Can you, uh, we can't hear you. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Hello. Hello. So you can hear me now? I can hear you nicely. Okay, thank you. So um, uh, it's just a comment to say. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, I'm just. Uh, I wanted to say we appreciate what you're doing for for us, especially trying to get us in touch with the world in terms of technology. Because it seems like we 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 are lacking behind some way somehow in these things, and people are much afraid. Kind of like a cyber phobia as far as technology is concerned. So the more you push us forward, the more we get to be involved. Cool. Um, I'd, and a, a, a word to everyone, the whole world at the moment is struggling with how to do remote teaching. So don't feel too intimidated. Everyone's learning as they go along. Uh, use this opportunity to see what works for you. Uh, tell us if something doesn't work for you. I mean, we're all trying to work it out. What is the best method to do remote teaching in the future? So cool. Don't feel intimidated. Just see it as a big <laughs> Okay. Another way that you can talk to us is the chat. And I see we've got a few things in the chat. Let's just have a look. Um, we've got um, some people saying that they like the certificate, that the program looks interesting. Um, uh, yes, and uh, Mubonderi, who's spoken to us already, says, uh, let's encourage the others. And I would strongly yeah, support each other if you can. Uh, I mean, we're from all around the country and I'm in Johannesburg. So uh, we're all around the subcontinent. But if you can help each other, that's even uh, it's very important. So don't always wait for love more. And I, if uh, in the WhatsApp, if someone asks a question, help them, help them. If you know the answer, help them. So thank you very much. That's the end of today's session. You are free to go.